Global warming is the term used to describe the steady increase in the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere and oceans. You have probably heard on the news or at school about the effects of global warming, such as sea level rise, crop failure, animal extinction, and extreme weather. Sounds pretty serious, huh? Well, it is. Although global warming has and will continue to have dramatic effects on the environment, we just don't seem to be taking it seriously enough. Although the entire scientific community has come to the agreement that global warming is real and is caused by human activity, not all politicians seem to be convinced. Arguments against global warming include things like. Global temperature rises are due to natural variations in the sun's output, such as sunspots. I'm sure you've all heard of Galileo Galilei, that man with the beard who suggested that the Earth revolved around the sun. Yes, him. Well, shortly after he made his new telescope in 1660, he made the first European observation of sunspots. Well, what exactly are sunspots? I hear you ask. Sunspots are dark planet-sized regions found over the surface of the sun. They appear dark because they are colder than the areas surrounding them. But by no means mistake these sunspots were cold. They're really, really, and I mean really hot. But this number isn't constant. No, in fact, the number of sunspots change in a repeated cycle. An increase in the number of sunspots means an increase in the sun's activity. When I say activity, I mean solar flares and coronal mass ejections. Now, these are just fancy words for extremely large explosions on the photosphere of the sun. This results in an increase in radiation, which alters the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere. Well, there is a correlation between the rise and fall of the Earth's temperature to the number of sunspots on the sun. The politicians got that much right. However, this is only responsible for changing the Earth's temperature by plus or minus 0.18 Kelvin. People have jumped to the conclusion that the present increase in the Earth's temperature is a result of this natural cycle, and there is nothing to worry about. Well, that is not the case. In fact, numerous independent measurements of solar activity indicate that the Sun has been in a slight cooling phase since 1960. In other words, the Sun and the climate have been moving in opposite directions. So there you have it. Unfortunately for us, sunspots are not responsible for global warming. What proof do scientists actually have for climate change? One of the most revealing pieces of evidence that we have for the recent and sudden change in the Earth's climate is ice core samples. How can you learn about the Earth's changing temperature through a block of ice? Well, ice core samples contain small air bubbles that act as small samples of the Earth's atmosphere as far back as 800,000 years ago. These air samples allow scientists to determine the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere at that time and what the temperature was. What the ice core samples reveal is that carbon dioxide concentrations were very stable over the last 1,000 years, until the beginning of the 1800s, which was the start of the Industrial Revolution. At the moment, CO2 concentrations are 40% higher than they were before the start of the Industrial Revolution. Pretty scary. By looking at the Earth's CO2 levels over the last 800,000 years, it is clear that the CO2 levels at the moment are strikingly high. And that is due to the carbon dioxide emissions from burning fossil fuels and deforestation. What does all of this show us? Well, it tells us that global temperatures have been increasing, not due to natural variations in the sun's output, as some people try to argue, but as a direct result of our actions. So maybe the next time you finish your bottle of Fanta, throw it in the recycling bin. Or the next time you need to get to your best friend's house, why not cycle? Or even simply when you leave the room, flick off the lights.